Okay, I have a sneaky suspicion that you clicked on this video hoping to get some sort of magic formula that will show you exactly which stocks to buy and when. Unfortunately, there is no magic formula when it comes to investing in stocks. However, there is a indicator that is stronger than any other indicator that predicts a stock's success over the long term, in my opinion, and that's what we'll get to here in this video. Hi, my name is John Quas. Thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel, Working Capital. On this channel, we try very hard to learn about money stuff and then also put it into practice. Now, let's start off this video with why you came here. You want to know how to find a good stock to invest in. Let's preface this entire conversation with a truth in investing, and that is that earnings per share growth drives stock performance over a very long period of time. Now, I'm going to back this up with some research from Yardeni Research. Now, this chart goes all the way back nearly 100 years, and as you can see, consistently over time, as the earnings of the S&P 500 have grown, so too as the value of the S&P 500. As the earnings go up, so too does the value. And that's true of all stocks. Stocks that grow their earnings over a long period of time tend to have their stocks go up as well. So this is something to keep in mind as we go along here. Okay, first, when I'm looking for a stock to invest in, I'm first looking at the market. So what is the overall market opportunity for that company? Let's make this practical and use cybersecurity as one example. According to analytics firm McKinsey, there's an estimated 150 billion spent on cybersecurity in 2021 alone. However, McKinsey believes that this opportunity could 10X by the year 2030, which is absolutely incredible market growth over the long term. Now, I'm no expert. However, this does make logical sense to me. Criminals are only getting more sophisticated over time, and this is causing tech companies to spend more and more to keep their companies safe. Therefore, it's only logical that this whole spending in this category of cybersecurity would grow over time, leading to a large opportunity for a handful of players in the space. All right, two, revenue growth. Now, it's important to distinguish between inorganic revenue growth, inorganic revenue growth. So what's the difference? Organic revenue growth is when the business is growing on its own. Take something like a Chipotle Mexican grill. Its growth has been organic. It has been able to open up new restaurant locations and it's been able to get more people into its restaurants by increasing restaurant efficiency and throughput. And this has led to incredible organic revenue growth over the long term. That's different from a company that acquires another company. And when it does that, yes, it's going to grow its revenue because it got the other company's revenue now as part of its own. However, acquisitions are really complicated and they don't always work out. So I prefer organic revenue growth to in organic revenue growth. Another thing to look for with revenue growth is optionality. And so optionality is when a company has a core competence, like for example, Chipotle and making burritos, but then they have the opportunity to open up a completely new revenue stream. Take Amazon, for example. It grew into this giant company by selling things online. However, in more recent years, what has been driving Amazon's results is its Amazon Web Services, its cloud computing product. So this is optionality on Amazon's part. It's really a desirable trait in a company. All right, number three, gross profit margin. Let's go back to Chipotle Mexican Grill as an example. When you buy a burrito from them, you give them money, but that burrito costs money to make. They had to buy the tortilla, the meat, all the ingredients, and that is your cost of goods. You subtract that out, what you're left with is a gross profit, and a percentage of that is your gross profit margin. Companies with high gross profit margins or gross profit margins that are going up is a very desirable trait in the stock to invest in. Now, I should point out that not all companies with a high gross profit margin are good investment opportunities. Take a company called Skills. This is a esports mobile gaming platform. It has incredible gross margins at nearly 90%. However, the stock is down more than 90% in 2022 because it just hasn't been a good business otherwise. Take the gross profit margin with a grain of salt, but still, generally speaking, higher and going up, that is a desirable trait. All right, number four is operating margin. After you take out the cost of generating the revenue, your cost of goods, you have other expenses as well, like sales and marketing or research and development. What you're left with after all that spending is your operating profit, and a percentage of that is your operating margin. Companies that have strong operating margins, or again, that are going up over time, is a strong indication of a stock that can be a good one to invest in. Take a company like Crocs. Yes, the foam shoemaker. 
They have incredible operating margins at nearly 26% as of this recording. That is far superior to competitors like Nike, Skechers, so it's definitely something that stands out with a company like Crocs. Number five is earnings per share growth. Now we started this video talking about how it's ultimately the earnings per share that drives stock performance over the long term. Now we're looking at the earnings per share growth. A company can grow its earnings per share in a variety of ways. It can grow the revenue, which is why we looked at that. Its profit margins can get better over time. We looked at that as well. But a company can also repurchase their own shares. If you have earnings that are staying the same, but the share count is going down, then your earnings per share is going up. If your earnings are going up and your share count is going down, then your earnings per share are going up even faster. All right, and finally, we come to valuation. This is a very complicated subject, but ultimately we are looking for stocks that trade at a good value. We intrinsically know this with something like real estate. Nobody wants to pay $400,000 for a house, say, that's only appraising for $300,000. That would be overpaying what the house is worth. Suffice it to say, we're looking for a stock that trades at a good value. Now, some people watching might take issue with what I just said because they might label themselves as a growth investor as opposed to a value investor. However, I think we should take advice from one of the greatest investors of all time, Warren Buffett. And Warren Buffett has said that there is no distinction between growth investing and value investing, and I think it's a really important lesson to learn. Here's what he said in the 1992 letter to Berkshire Hathaway shareholders. He said, we think the very term value investing is redundant. What is investing if it is not the act of seeking value at least sufficient to justify the amount paid. Buffett did go on to clarify in his letter that a high valuation number doesn't necessarily mean it's not a value investment. It can still be a good value over the long term, even if it looks expensive by traditional valuation metrics. However, it is ultimately about buying a stock at a good value for whatever your intended holding period is. Anyways, there's so much more that we could talk about with valuation. It's a very tricky subject, but that is what I'm looking for when I'm trying to find a good stock to invest in. Thanks for watching. I hope that you found value. If you want to learn more about Warren Buffett and his style, maybe you'd be interested in this video that I made about why Warren Buffett would never invest in Bitcoin. See you in the next video.